What is up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Iowa Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we are coming at you each and every week with a fresh service to debrief in effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm Mark Francis in the host seat with me, also Miss Alicia Vitalia. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good it to see is you. a great week, and uh, it's Global not Church a, Week. It's Global Church Week. And it's also in Virginia for all of our visitors here. They get to experience the beautiful fall colors. It's vibrant. It's gorgeous outside. Yeah, uh, and it's a little windy today, but the fall colors are gorgeous. So perfect complain. week for our global friends to come visit. They're here and they are excited. I know that I've been interacting with a lot of them in the middle of study sessions and all kinds of business, which is actually where our pastors of missions are right now. We have pastors uh, Scott McManigal and Jim Poole who were a part of the sermon this past week, but instead we have Mark Carey. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm we a, really wanted I'm them. A, I'm you a know? good substitute. Because <laughs> I think they're sh they're gun shy. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're busy. <laughs> they're very they busy. busy. They are very busy. Yeah. What's going on. Yeah. And so are you. So thank you for taking time out of your busy to come join us today. Yes. It's well, great. The pay the pay is great. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all the the candy they give out. You know. Yeah, each right. and every. You know, th there's basically I think there's still value to have you here, Mark, because. You were a little bit a part of the, the service, um, but even more so, you've been at our church for 30 plus years. And so to have you interject some of the, the history of what maybe people who are watching and listening don't know of our missions program, mm -hmm. tell us how we got to where we are today. Yeah, a little bit evolution. Yeah. Why, why we do what we do. Sure. And uh, how God motivated that. You know, Fellowship Bible Church has been in existence for 41 years. We celebrated our 40th anniversary mm -hmm. last year. And really from the very beginning, the interest in missions was there. When those original families met, um, there was a, an understanding of, of the Great Commission and mm -hmm. a local church needs to be a part of that. So very early on, there was a commitment made. Now, it began to formalize back in the 1980s. Again, the church started in 1980. Mm -hmm. When they, they met a young uh, Bible college student who was a, a national uh, um, African from Kenya, mm. from a tribe called the Pokot, or Pokot tribe. Mm -hmm. He was the second person of that tribe to come to faith in Christ. His name mm. is Julius Murgor. Mm -hmm. And he went to Washington Bible College, and we met him at that time. And so that started kind of, well, the, this is an interesting recall, because typically American missions, you've got... A, a bunch of North American missionaries, and you got a big map and a budget, and you you send you know fifty bucks here and there, and you right you, you know you that that's kind of a typical missions. Um, shortly thereafter, we met um, another or begin to support. We never met him. Start, start, started to support another national uh, pastor from India, northern India, hmm. James and Lali Shankar, hmm. and then um, there was a, a a seminary down in southern India that. Was con we were connected with through Dallas Theological Seminary. And um, uh, Joy and um, Leela George, he was the president of uh, the seminary down there in, in southern India, in Bangalore. So in the 80s, there was kind of this mix of typical American missionaries and then some national leaders. Partnering with partnering people with from people. the local communities. Yeah, And then I came here in 90, and we began to see um, really prayerfully consider uh, this idea of supporting nationals more more fully. Mm -hmm. And in 1991, a, a guy from our church, um, Jim Annable, who's still a member of our church, went down to South Texas and met, uh, there was a school down there called Rio Grande Bible Institute, and mm -hmm. he met a young Ecuadorian teacher there by the name of Wilson Campoverde. Mm -hmm. Got connected, and before long, uh, the church sent me down to Mexico City in uh, in ninety one to visit that church, and it was a, a pastor there, Raúl Santana, and, mm. and the and the church in Mexico City, and it began to kind of solidify this idea. Working with national church leaders, just there was a vibrancy there. Of course, if you ever been around Wilson Campo Verde, it just exudes <laughs> vibrancy. But um, 
So we, I came back from that trip. The elders got together in the spring of 1992 and said, let's, let's, let's prayerfully consider. We went away for a retreat mm -hmm. and see what the Lord would have mm. for us to do. So in 1992, in spring, we got away, went to Hunting Ridge, uh, up north 522, went to a, a weekend retreat and hammered out a kind of a new direction for global missions for mm. FBC mm. that predominantly said we're going to, we're going to build um, into the lives of national leaders. Our goal was to help establish churches mm. and, and people who already know their language, know their culture, help establish churches who then can uh, be the outpost mm. to reach more of their country uh, for, for Christ. Mm. So we begin to transition that, that plan. The next year in 1993, it kind of began to solidify even more when Julius Murgor, who had now had gone back to Kenya, came uh, back here for a missions conference. And I'll never forget the, the meeting that we had. It was in Dave and Joan Dixon's um, home and the missions committee, Tim McManigal was chairing our, chairing our missions committee. And we sat and talked with um, Julius and asked him, Julius, what are, what, what are your main needs in Pokot? in this tribal group in Western, Western Kenya. And mm -hmm. he said, without a doubt, he said, it's, it's leadership training. He mm -hmm. said, we are a church mm -hmm. that is a mile wide, mm -hmm. but an inch deep mm -hmm. churches. People were coming to faith. Churches were getting started under little trees all over, you know, West uh, Kenya, but there were the leadership thing. So he asked if we'd be willing to consider building a training center and helping mm -hmm. them oh, wow. put it to the congregation. We raised $7,000 for the training center. And uh, I think it was in, um, yeah, 1994, uh, Tim McMadigal and Mike Thomas, uh, who had come to church here, uh, had moved here and now was part of our missions team. Mm -hmm. Tim McMadigal and Mike Thomas in 1994 went over there to dedicate kind of a, this building mm -hmm. and do the first on-site training of leaders in a, in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. Never had done that before. Mm -hmm. The next year, Mike Thomas and I went to that same place. I taught through uh, Bible study methods in Galatians. Mike was mm -hmm. teaching actually a, a literacy program. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 1996, I went back again with Tim McManigal and Chet Martin. Chet was a, mm -hmm. uh, elder an elder at the time. At the time. Yeah. And so we begin to see the value of connecting with national leaders and, um, and, and pouring our, 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 our life into them in training and developing their giftedness so that they could reach their people uh, for Christ. From there, it just began to grow. We, um, I had a friend in seminary um, when I was there in the 70s, Fred Tempe's. He was a, a mixed race of South African, um, mm -hmm. and uh, we began supporting him and working with Fred in, in, in uh, South Africa. Um, which led to the Chippendales, Cedric and Pauline Chippendale, who we continue to support today. Um, it, also in India, it was Jai Pandey and uh, the work he was doing. It, it just began to kind of, there were like stepping stones. Connections were being made. And one of our values that we had hammered out um, early on in the 90s was this value of, uh, of, of in, enduring and endearing relationships. Mm -hmm. Again, we just wanted to avoid the map and a budget thing. Yep. How can we build relationships with these people? And um, the 90s, I think, were, were, were it was that formative decade that we've been able to build on and continue to grow. And like you said, it's a springboard because then God opens doors to then build relationships with somebody new. Right. And then a different country. Right. And then more churches. Right. And, and again, it's more than just one person you know you're pouring in they are pouring into pastors who are then pouring into other pastors in many situations and pouring into their congregations and their mm -hmm. congregations so literally hundreds and thousands of people are impacted uh, our literacy programs in terms of um the materials that we begin to write and um, the distinctiveness of what we were trying to present what what we saw over and over and over again and it's no different in american churches was a was kind of a pervasive um, legalism mm. uh, and, and a mindset that was really keeping the church under a, an oppressive um, theology. Uh, well, in many respects, it's it's what 
the Apostle Paul had to deal with in, in uh, Galatians, mm -hmm. the, a, kind of an impure gospel. And Scott and, and Jim Poole, our missions pastors, spoke on this this past Sunday. So you can go online and listen to, to their heart on that. Mm -hmm. But we saw it everywhere. Um, so churches were were uh, around the world were dealing with a kind of a legalism mentality of um, the, it, part of it was you could lose your salvation if you don't perform mm -hmm. or or you, God it won't be pleased with you if you don't perform and mm -hmm. and these pastors were putting people under the law and it was just it was it was not anything you'd want to present to a world yeah. of God's grace and love and goodness and the mm -hmm. impact of that is it's just, devastating yeah yeah. It devastates a church. Yep. So the focal point of what we want to do is convey this idea of uh, of we're, we're we're not only just saved by grace through faith, but we live by grace through faith. That we we appropriate what God has given us in the presence of His Son, who dwells within us, and the Holy Spirit, and we live out in a compelling way the power that we have. And it's not mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. doing it in our own strength. It it is something that God works in us and through us for his good pleasure, the fruit of the Spirit that is born. And when that message began to resonate with pastors from Latin America and, and, and Africa and in India, uh, even other places that we went, yeah. um, it was like scales falling mm -hmm. from people's mm -hmm. eyes. Well, Jim Poole, he, in uh, the Sunday message, he said, people who are established in the fake, faith make established churches. Yeah. And I think that that's exactly what's being communicated here. And as that, um, as those churches become taught, equipped, trained, and then they can, um, in essence, send out and grow as well. And you, so you, it's... You can't impart what you don't possess. Exactly. And if, and if you're possessing a kind of works-based theology, whether it's for getting to heaven or or living the Christian life here on earth, hmm. um, I mean, you can have all sorts of mission activity. You can have a multi-million dollar budget, but if you're propagating, if you're, if you're passing along a works, a, an impure gospel, a work, then what, what good is it? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that the message, the message is preeminent. Yeah. The message and, is preeminent. And this is biblical. I mean, the model of, again, sending missionaries is one thing. I just, I, I love the idea that these are global church partners that we have. It, 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 because we're truly partnering with, and attempting to establish churches around the world so they can then disciple mm -hmm. their own people in their own culture. You know, white man coming to a different kind of part of the world to try to share something that, hey, I have something that you need. That's challenging, <laughs> I mean, and that's that was the model of true missionary work in for two centuries, eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds, leading up to that. Right, and and it works. Okay, people will get saved, but then when they leave, what happens? Right, and there's a broader history of of missiology. Uh, I mean, you talk about the nineteen sixties, colonialism, which was the mm -hmm. the, the, the norm in, of global missions. It was the it was the mindset of uh, of geopolitical um, uh, movements, and you know, conquering nations, and then you you know, mm. half of Africa was controlled by the French or the Belgians or the whatever, uh, the British. You know, the, the sun never set on, on the British Empire, and so they exported yeah. a kind of Western Christianity mindset. Well, in the sixties, nineteen sixties, a lot of these uh, tribal groups were saying, you know. Forget this, and uh, and revolutions started. It was mixed with mm -hmm. political motivations. Yeah, just again, impure gospel, impure motivations yeah. uh, of where missionaries were coming from, and, and and unfortunately, it's still out there today. Potentially, of just let's check a box and how many, how much money can I raise as being a missionary, and and how many in my letter, how many people can I save got have been saved, and yeah. so supportive. And um, we had a community group last night. And we're able to hear from one of the people who we support that is part of China. We won't talk mm -hmm. about names and stuff like that. But, and he shared with us that that's a model. And he's mm -hmm. seen that throughout China and mm -hmm. he's seen that throughout the world. Mm -hmm. I remember one story that he shared. Maybe you can recall it better, Alicia. But as China was trying to really you know, 
bring out, you know, the people who are supporting the churches there. They called out all the leaders to a central location, and they're all white people. Mm-hmm. They're all white pastors in a Chinese culture. Mm-hmm. And, and just that, to me, that resonated, that story, and again, I'm sharing it really poorly, but that resonated well, to me then, of how that that is not establishing a church. That's not yeah. working within a culture. And then, to the effects that these people groups are dealing with, and uh, it, I attended the Native American Forum on Sunday night, mm. and that was so eye-opening mm. to me. And what those um, the tribes of people are just having to continue to reel with from these effects of westward expansion and white man's religion, and um, just how how oppressive it is uh, for them in their communities and. Uh, how hard it is for this pure gospel. I loved how Scott and and Jim brought out the, they emphasized the pure gospel, this mm-hmm. perfect, this complete gospel, because the waters are muddied. It's just very confusing. Um, it's hard for people to find their identity. And it's only in this pure perfect gospel that we can find our true identity in Christ. Yeah. And so let's, let's recap that. I mean, define the pure gospel, right. you know, right. I mean, I, it, we can never, it doesn't get old. Yeah. You know, so I'll turn to both of you guys. I mean, sh- well, I, I mean, the good news, the gospel is good news about Jesus and what Jesus has done. It, it's, it all centers upon what Jesus has done. An impure gospel is when we mix what we have done mm-hmm. into that mix mm-hmm. and we can front load um, the gospel by saying, um, in order to get to heaven, you have to do something. That's mixing human effort with um, it, bringing it alongside what Christ has done. And of course, we know that that's that's an impure gospel. That doesn't get anybody to heaven. And so, while we may be correct in that, that it's in Christ alone, through faith alone, because of God's grace alone, we can preach that. It's the other part of that in terms of living the Christian mm-hmm. life that can also get impurities mixed mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. And, and so when we talk about a pure gospel, we're saying that what, what did the death of Christ and his resurrection accomplish, and how do we um, appropriate that truth so that we can live the Christian life yeah. in the way it was meant? And if, it, and, and if we mix our own self-effort and human effort in with that um, in an inappropriate way, um, because we, we don't, it's not, it's not passivism, but mm. th- there is a, um, uh, the impure gospel is when we do not understand or appropriate the grace of God, the gospel that I died with Christ, I've been buried, I've been raised up to, with newness of life. It's Romans 6, 7 and 8. And if we mix that works mentality in with that, um, it, you, you've got people who are heaven bound, but they're not enjoying the trip. Because they're under a load of mm. uh, yeah. of guilt or or mm. works uh, mm. mentality, so that's what we talk about a, a, a pure sense of, of what 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 are the impacts yeah. of Christ's death and resurrection, especially to existing believers. You right, know, it's easy to share you know grace alone for justification, especially you know if, if you're in a different country and missionaries have shared that. I think there will be leaders who would get that. That's right. But there's plenty of leaders who are. You know, establishing churches who are not doing it in and, this grace based manner. And that's the point. They're not establishing churches. <laughs> right. There might be starting churches, right. but they're not establishing the mm. churches. And that right. means they're not building them strong and uh, deeply rooted in the truths of God so that mm-hmm. uh, when, the, when the winds of uh, suffering and, mm. and uh, whatever blow, they don't topple over because so this isn't, this Christian thing isn't working. Yes. You know, it, it I love the fact that um, Scott <clears throat> emphasized that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, that's the provision for every part of our salvation. So for our justification, our sanctification, our glorification, mm-hmm. it all, uh, th- that's, that's the core right there. That's and it. if the moment we start to stray away from that and start to add, Whatever our ideas, our cultural influences, whatever, uh, the, then that taints it. It, yes. it mm-hmm. is, and then it becomes that gospel that's contrary yeah. that Paul was talking about. And it really about. comes down to 
one's view of God. Mm -hmm. Did God actually accomplish this? And it, it is his grace sufficient? Mm. And if we don't have that, that full message that is, I think, beautifully laid out. We just finished studying the Book of Romans, but mm -hmm. that's beautifully laid out in the Book of Romans. If we if we miss that, it, it's so easy to have a view of God that's been shaped by maybe our past experiences, yep. our our bad, and and that begins to weigh on us. And we have a view of God that if I step out of line, He's going to squash me like a bug, or a a, a, a sentimental or a, or a gruff old grandpa. Mm -hmm. a, stairs somewhere, the, the man upstairs, we, 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 that affects how we live out the Christian life. And, you know, I've always said, Satan, um, th there might not be um, defeated Christians, because in Christ we're totally victors, victorious, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there's sure a lot of ignorant Christians. Yeah. And if he can neutralize Christians from our effectiveness by making us ignorant on our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ, he's, he, he can't get us to hell because we're eternally saved. Mm. But he can render us totally ineffective so that we're absolutely no good uh, for kingdom purposes. Yeah, that we're not shining a light That's right. to people I mean, around us. Who wants to listen to a gospel <laughs> message that you know, that is, has a view of God that is warped and And it's imprecise. so easy, like you just shared, it's so easy to have our own perspectives, our own personalities, our own bents, our backgrounds infiltrate how we view God and how we view the Christian life. And, and, if, and if we're bringing our own thoughts and our own views, it's not from scripture, that's not from God's yeah. word, we're going to be tainting it in a way that is either trying to benefit ourselves or is going to try it's try to there's impure motivations right. that go with that and and then the results like you shared are just devastating yeah. uh, and it doesn't matter what culture i mean right it, it, every culture has uh, mm -hmm. has uh, dads who aren't training their kids right and have a help shape a warped view of god every mm. culture has these issues and mm. so uh, again our primary focus is to go and help establish churches through the many materials that we um, study the biblical materials, the teachings and the trainings that we do, mm -hmm. um, the travel. That why that's why it involves yeah. a lot of travel. It's yeah. been difficult for during COVID right. to do that, but we've done a lot of Zoom well, and another thing that you said earlier. Uh, you were talking about the relational aspect of our global missions, and um, that was one thing that the the person that was joined our small group last night that she was sharing that impacted her, uh, probably one of the biggest things that's impacted her in their ministry is the fact that uh, Scott and Jim came to their home just to see them, not mm -hmm. to like micromanage anything, mm -hmm. like check numbers, nothing like that, just to care for their souls. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just, she shared that what a huge impact that that has been to her yeah. and and what and what Tim McManigal, our first missions pastor, um, I think built into the life of our missions ministry was that spirit of grace, mm. of kindness, of mm -hmm. genuine, authentic relational. love, relational yeah. connections. Right. Um, it's that has been carried on by his son Scott McManigal, Jim Poole, um, our missions team. And Scott's kids, you know, Scott's kids, <laughs> right. that's right, the, the <laughs> generational family. Right. Yep. And, uh, and so, you know, this week we have people from Latin America and Africa and uh, different places ar around the world here um, and uh, um, fellowshipping together, studying together. I thought it was interesting on Saturday night, um, we called our guests up to just introduce them at the beginning of our FSAT service. Some of them had just come mm. that day. Mm -hmm. And so when they're walking up, I don't know if you caught this. Right. Were you there Saturday night? I was there. Yeah. I was I was behind the scenes, behind the drums. Yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so when they went up forward, it was the first time that they'd seen each other for two years mm -hmm. for some of these. Yeah. And you know, they're <laughs> hugging each moment. other. And they're yeah. On the stage. Sure. On yeah. stage. Yeah. Because oh, we, th these are relationships, again, mm. that have been forged over time. A common, a common uh, uh, desire to share this this gospel message and to to establish our churches together. Uh, it's it's incredibly rewarding, mm -hmm. and I only eternity will kind of I think 
measure mm. the, the, the long-term mm. eternal impacts. Yeah. We'll only know about it then. But. And part of, the, part of the history, I'll go back to that, we, we contribute significant amount of funds, Fellowship Bible Church, to support missions. Just walk us through kind of the heart of the elders and, and kind of that well, amount that goes you're into right. supporting. You're right. Again, years ago when the church uh, was being formulated and stuff, the mentality was we should give a tithe. So whatever our take is, our general offering, you know, a tithe should go to the Great Commission. And so that was kind of a discipline that had been set up. Mm -hmm. uh, we did some increases in the 90s a little bit here and there as, as we began to see our, our mission global family expand, which by the way, that's another historical interesting point was that we realize needs are everywhere. Mm -hmm. But we, if you spread yourself too thin, then we're no better than a map and a budget again. Right. Yep. So we wanted to make sure that mm. we had few, we, we would invest in, in key leaders in places around the mm -hmm. world who could then uh, pass on the deposit. It's a Second Timothy 2.2 mm -hmm. principle, really. Mm -hmm. So as that ministry did begin to grow and FBC began to grow, um, the elders uh, decided uh, to, to do a 20%, a double tithe. And uh, to this day, that's what we're still doing. Uh, as long as the Lord directs us that way. And we're supporting these people, uh, I say these people, but the global church partners around the world in some capacity, whether sure. we're visiting them or financially or however that goes. Right. Uh, but here's another caveat that you have to be careful of and mindful of, and that is when you're dealing with those types of national works, um, see, American missionaries, they come to the United States, or they're from the United States, they raise their support, yep. might take four years, and then they go off and, and, and then, but they mm -hmm. build their support and then they come back and, and do uh, deputation and read. Make their rounds. Make right. their rounds. And right. that's what you have to do, but they're mm -hmm. getting support. Mm -hmm. uh, nationals can't do that. Right. right. Um, and yet, um, the, the thing that you also want to avoid is this thing of dependency. Mm. So mm -hmm. um, we, we want to avoid being viewed as the the you know the bucket the of all daddy. shekels you <laughs> yeah. know and uh, when you have a need um so th there is this there are biblical principles of giving and taking care of your own that also have to be taught mm. well and, and that and trusting, that's again, where the, grace of the God. equipping mm. yes comes along like it's not just here we're going to send you money but it's this whole relational aspect of we're going to not only partner with you but we're going to equip you and train yes. you which is huge and and when they trust your heart when they yes. know that we are not you know then th th they're it's it yeah that uh, that relationship give an example i remember one time one of the national leaders in one of the countries their their uh, vehicle had absolutely died and they needed a new vehicle so mm -hmm. they they informed us of that need well we, we could snap our finger call mm -hmm. the congregation together and we'd have a you know a new vehicle right in a heartbeat uh but tim McManigal at that time very wisely said well i'll tell you what you raise half and then we'll raise half mm -hmm. Now here was the big church in in Virginia, right? And they were, but they understood that, and they mm -hmm. knew Tim's heart mm -hmm. because of the relationships that right. had been formed, and that's exactly what happened. They worked, they 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 saved, and they sacrificed. Mm -hmm. They raised half the money, and then we paid for the rest. Mm. That's neat. Yeah. My husband last night after a small group um, and just our time together with the missionaries was really sweet. But he said uh, in the car driving home, he said. You know, it's a real privilege to uh, have a job for those of us who are here. And he said, it's really neat to be able to have a job to be able to support these people. Because sometimes if we're not actively on the mission field doing that, we feel like, well, how am I involved in missions? Um, but he, he, he brought the perspective of, you know, this is what God's called us to, to have a job and to be able to support financially. Yeah. And that's huge. And that's important. That's and why we use the word partnership. Yes. Yeah. We partner with <laughs> mm -hmm, people to, mm -hmm. to, to make this happen. Right. I, that's why I also think it's very important to be a part of a local church that has this vision. Now there, there's, there's many good works going on and there's many great, uh, uh, philanthropy in the heart of Americans mm -hmm. and, and, and the church mm -hmm. and money is given. But what has been, I think, 
energizing for our church here is th this personal relationship yeah. is a week like this where you get to see where your giving does mm -hmm. go and yeah. where how right. you because it's more than just again a map and a budget right um so again if you know if people are if, if you move away if you go try to find another church or whatever it, it might be rare to find a church like fellowship bible church that has this kind of missions it's mm -hmm. really unique it is unique yeah. but um and like the message last missions. week uh when we, the th the you know with the sermon being names you know mm. knowing our names and and this week is so beautiful because we're actually seeing these people who have names who have real stories and to be able to come alongside them get to know them and it's just uh really special we'll yeah, continue to get to know them and i'll just share that on friday night we're going to have uh, just essentially three different locations with visitors at, we're calling it progressive dinner, but it's more than that. It's almost a big family night. It's build relationships with the people. Go bounce around from our Hispanic church in town to at, at Fellowship Bible Church to then Fellowship Bible Church Shenandoah. Three different locations, and you really, we can be a part of it and interact with them from that standpoint. Also, the next two weeks, uh, there are episodes in the Fellowship Family podcast. We're going to get a chance to hear from them as well. So we're going to hear mm -hmm. from Juan and Teresa Delgado um, this coming Friday when that drops. And then next week will be some people from Kenya. Mm -hmm. So just to hear the heart of in, the stories that you're going to hear are as identical to what Mark is sharing right now yeah. mm -hmm. of, of how they're building a church and then they're spreading the gospel to and, others. And by the way, just a little side note, um, Teresa Delgado yep. is the daughter of... The, the Campo Verdes. Yep. So here's another generation. Oh, wow. And that, she uh, shares that. Uh, just a little teaser. Okay. You'll get a chance to hear their love story. So, yes. So do people have to <laughs> sign up for the progressive dinner? No, nope, no sign up needed. Just show up. It's going to be an open house between 530 and 830. So just bounce around from one of those three places. You can go to one. You can go to two. You can go to all three. So FBCVA dot life slash global church, global church week. week and it'll and they'll be give there. the directions and they'll have like addresses you don't so if you don't know where the shenandoah church is go to the website and will some there. of the food be different kinds of food that so you'll have okay. a taste of different cultures, cultures. so you'll have a, a latin culture at the hispanic church in town a little bit appetizers you'll have some african flair at fbc and you'll actually have some desserts Believe it or not, it's going to be more Shenandoah Valley desserts oh. down for those people who hey, visit. It's, like, it's like a foreign country. It is like a foreign Shenandoah, country. No. <laughs> so, but the the church down there has really grabbed onto this idea of hosting this uh, particular. So we're going to have people from the United States will be down there. A couple of the Native American, uh, Thompson's from Chicago, and uh, a couple other people will be down there. So that'll be kind of our American culture. Yeah. And the Shenandoah church was like, Let's give you a taste of Shenandoah. That's great. County. That's, that's really neat. So, yeah, that's good. Yes. You know, as we wrap this up, I do just want to sh share this, that over 40 years of the life of Fellowship Bible Church, there is, it, as I said at the very beginning, it's kind of been an evolving, but it, it's something that's maybe not the right term. It's There's something dynamic. It's a, it's a it's not just an organizational um a structural chart it's an organism it's mm -hmm. life and it's mm -hmm. it's it it's it, it has changed it has morphed uh, some of our dear people that we started working with are now with the lord mm -hmm. in, in heaven yeah. and we've and and so one of the more recent as you've mentioned is the native american ministry and we mm -hmm. put that a sunday night forum which is online i believe yep. that people mm -hmm. can yeah. go back yeah. uh, desperate needs right mm -hmm. right here in our own country um and so God seems to be opening up a door for us to get involved, and we've had wonderful times this week with um, people from yeah. Tucson or uh, Arizona, uh, South Dakota, um, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's kind of like stay tuned because this thing kind of never stays the same. God is active and He's working, and there's some really neat things, and He's using you, FBC yep. people, and your gifts and your prayers and your interest in people's lives, um, like I said, we'll never know the impact until we get to heaven. And it's neat to see God do that. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, it, we haven't just pushed a part of it. But hey, yeah. if we're going to preach a pure gospel of God's grace and <laughs> getting ourselves out of the way, we better get out of the let way. Let God do it. <laughs> I, so real quick, can you all give a little, just a brief uh, introduction to what this is? This is the Knowing God, knowing uh, God booklet. The, yes, mm -hmm. the Knowing God booklet that 
was referred to on Sunday morning in the in the message, and uh, there's lots of chatter about it. So for those of us who don't know about it, can you give us a few words about it? Yeah, I, I will say Jim Poole is on the podcast that's going to release on Friday. He shares a little bit about it. Okay. But it, it's, it's from the heart of our missions program to progressively walk people through knowing God in a way that reveals his grace, reveals his love from start to finish. There's also a, a, a teachings creation of Christ that right. they started with. So, so it's foundational because um, it was A.W. Tozer, I've quoted this many times, but it was A.W. Tozer, a quote, I think, in, in The Knowledge of the Holy, who said, uh, what a man thinks about God is the most important thing about him and mm-hmm. determines the whole course of his life. Um, great thoughts of God make great Christians. Small thoughts of God make small Christians. And it's it's foundational. How we view God is going to be... Uh, and, and the Scriptures is a self-revelation. So it's, it's progressively uh, t- taking us through who mm-hmm. is God and what has He said and what has He done for us so that we can have a... Uh, a lifelong eternal relationship mm-hmm. of and joy. And that's mm-hmm. what's being shared to all of the churches around the world that we're partnering with. And, mm-hmm. and it's eye-opening to many of them. Mm-hmm. And, and to hear their stories and to say, oh, light bulb moments are going on around the world because of this understanding of God and grace. And you can go online to our FBC missions, go to ministries link and go to global missions. And these materials yep. are there in PDF forms mm-hmm. in multiple languages. Oh, yep. that's uh, awesome. I, yep. that the, the, um, Chinese Mandarin version of this, uh, I know a lady in our community, uh, who cuts my hair occasionally, uh, <laughs> occasionally, she, yeah, occasionally, <laughs> you know, uh, um, Anyway, we if if I sit in her chair, um, and she recently came to faith in mm. Christ not long ago, mm. within the last uh, couple of years, I was able to get her a copy of the Knowing God mm. in Mandarin, oh, wow. and she has just devoured it and mm. That's wonderful. really appreciate it. So, mm. look, it's the, the the world has come to us, and and so there's resources on our website that yeah. you can download, print out, or have our church office print out because that's a pretty thick book, right? And we'll get them to you. And we've got the mission That's stairwell wonderful. where a lot of the resources yep. are there. And you see the big map on the wall as you mm-hmm. walk up the stairs. You just might ignore a lot of the stuff. But resources are there yeah. online or in print. And yeah, fbcva.life, we've shared that. We can continue to go there. And resources are abundant, you know, but how we can apply them. And that's mm-hmm. what these conversations are all about. So thank you guys for watching and listening once again. Um, I'm excited about what's to come in the next few weeks, and um, we're continuing our overflow series. Um, and listen to the Global Church podcast, listen to the Fellowship Family podcast, and you will continue to grow in your understanding of what's happening here and around the world. So the fact of the matter, guys, is that sermons are not meant to take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love and God bless.